Hello and welcome to the final episode of The Silky Way, which is a mini-series dedicated to explore cruelty-free silk yarns. I've knitted with different cruelty-free silk yarns. I have different projects to show you. Some of them are completed and have been worn and <laughs> some of them are still in the working progress phase. Let's have a little introduction about cruelty-free silk. So what is cruelty-free silk? There are different types of silk. Silk can be called cruelty-free when um, uh, the chrysalids are allowed to mature into moths and butterflies and so the silkworm have technically uh, left the cocoons and when the cocoons are empty they are being transformed and like they are being harvested and transformed into fiber, into yarns. There are different types of cruelty-free silk yarns um, and I think it really depends on the type of worm, the type of um, silkworm and what they eat. And so the texture and the feeling of the cruelty-free silk yarn can be slightly different from one another. Um, but overall, they have more grip, they are more irregularly spun than the conventional silk. So in this mini-series, you can check the previous episodes, I've bought cruelty-free silk yarns from three different companies and I've knitted different projects with these yarns. Um, there are many more companies that sell cruelty-free silk yarns, but I decided to go with these three companies, one of which is very local to me and two other companies that are um, European-based, but they're quite known, well-known, so you can still find um, those yarns um, pretty much everywhere. I've made a little Google sheet, spreadsheet, Excel sheet <laughs> with all the information about these yarns that I purchased, the prices, the website where I bought them and um, also the different characteristics of these yarns. So you can go and check it out and as I will find maybe more cruelty-free silk um, yarn companies, I can add them to the spreadsheet. So I'll talk about each company separately and then I'll have kind of an overview of all of these companies together and kind of rate them a bit. I'm not sure I can really compare all of these yarns because if I wanted to really compare these yarns, I think I should have bought the same colors, I should have knitted the same projects, um, use the same needles, so the same gauge, but I haven't done that. I bought different colors, I've held the yarn single and double, so it's not really a proper kind of comparison experiment. Um, but I really um, got to know the different, um, the different feelings of the different yarns. So let's start with the first company. So the first company I um, decided to buy silk, cruelty-free silk yarns uh, is a company that is quite local to me. It's called Campolmi Filati. It's a very old school yarn company, Italian yarn company. They have a store in Florence and I was lucky enough to pass by Florence and check their store. It's a very old school store. And I believe that on top of it, on top of the store, they have their spinning laboratory but I'm not 100% sure. And they sell completely different type of fibers and yarns for different uses, weaving, spinning, knitting, crocheting, and so on, all of that. And they have cruelty-free silk. It's called Seta Boret, Boret Silk, which is a type of cruelty-free silk. And I bought two different colors. I bought a deep brown and a coral red. 
and I've knitted two projects with those yarns. So the first project, I'm actually wearing it, and it's this um, camisole number five by my favorite things knitwear, and I um, heavily, heavily modified it. Uh, I changed the gauge because I held the yarn double, I used needle size 3.75 or 3.5 millimeters, and I did quite few decreases below the harm holes, and yeah, um, I've done some modifications, but overall I'm so happy with the result. Uh, this looks really nice and I actually put it to test, let's say, by going on a very sweaty hike. I went on a kind of day long hike um, and it was really steep. I was going up on a mountain and I was really sweating and it really held well the moisture and I, yeah, I'm very, very happy how this um, kind of fabric feels on my skin. It's really kind of, it feels, it feels very soft, it's, it feels very light even though I've knitted it at a bigger gauge and I've held it um, double. And I really like the fact that I held it double because it's, um, it's not so much see-through. By the way, I forgot to say that all of the yarns I've tried and I've knitted with are fingering way yarns. So all of them are fingering way yarns. Um, maybe one of them is uh, light fingering, but they all have kind of the same weight. So I'm really happy with this garment. I will probably knit it again with this yarn or with other cruelty-free silk yarns because it just um, felt so nice. Knitting with cruelty-free silk is so such an interesting experience because it's not so stiff and hard on my hand like a plant-based yarn. And it's very important to understand that cruelty-free silk is not plant-based. Some people say like, oh, I want to knit with silk, uh, plant-based fiber. It's not. It's still produced by a, an insect, a living creature. So it's not technically vegan, but it is cruelty-free. Yeah, I really, really love how this fiber behaves and I kind of felt that I wanted to hold it double because it felt a little bit weak if I, yeah, holding it single felt a little weak. Um, I have actually a little bit of the yarns left. So in the store they can sell it in hanks, um, but online I bought it once here is the leftover. I bought this um, white color, there's <laughs> nothing left. Um, they sell it in cones and they sell it um, 100 grams cones and it's about 400-ish meters, maybe a bit more. So it's a fingering weight and um, it cost about eight bucks uh, per 100 grams, so it's a really good price. It's really affordable, I think, and it's the cheapest um, cruelty-free silk yarn among the three companies I've bought yarns from. So this is the leftover of the first, um, of. I think I bought 200 grams and I held it um, double. This is what is left. I think it's about maybe a bit less of 50 grams. And I really like how it feels really soft and it's irregularly spun. So it kind of, I don't know if you can see it, is um, it kind of has a good grip. It doesn't really slip too much when you knit with it, which I really appreciate because um, some 
Um, yarns have a lot of like they're very silky very smooth and they can you know slip easily when you knit with them and so it's a little it's a little challenging to knit with them but this doesn't slip so, super much and when you um, hold it double it's even better so I'm really happy with this garment I really love the the creases on the side that I've done it, it really, it really, it's really a nice, beautiful garment. The other uh, top I've knitted is in this beautiful color. Uh, I think it's really fun. So this uh, is the Look at My Holes by Jameson Watts. So I've knitted this pattern before, twice, I think. And I really love this pattern. It's so fun to knit and it's so nice to style. It's kind of like a little statement piece. And of course, it's very, it has these big juicy holes. So it's, you need to wear something underneath, but that's completely fine. And it's really good for the summer, especially in a warm climate like in Italy. I haven't worn this so much. I think I worn it once because it has been very cold, but I'm sure in the summer I will wear it all the time. Okay, so, and I've knitted this holding the yarn double again, and I wish I held it single to kind of compare a little bit this yarn with the other yarns, um, but I didn't, so. I always held this yarn either double or together with other uh, fibers. For example, last year I showed you before this cone. I always held it together with other fibers. And I've made this beautiful ranunculus and I've held the yarn together with a bamboo yarn by Silk City Fibers and I've also made this little bra um, this is a bra I kind of designed self-drafted I've knitted it at a very tight gauge using 2.25 millimeter needles and I've um, used both the, bo the same yarns the cruelty free silk bowret Silk by Campormi Filati and the cone by Silk City Fibers. I really enjoyed knitting with this yarn. Um, there are some, I wouldn't say like negative aspects, but some things to take in consideration. It peels a little bit, not absolutely too much and has only 14 color choices. I mean, it's not only, it's still quite a lot of color choices, but all of the colors are quite, like they're solids and very, you know, basic colors. But I'm actually really excited to buy more white yarn from them and dye it maybe with onion peels and different tree barks and see how this yarn, you know, takes up the color. Overall, I rate this yarn and the projects I've knitted 8.5 out of 10. Um, yeah, I think it's a really nice yarn and I really appreciate the fact that this company Mm, sells it at a very um, fair and affordable price. I think the main thing with Campomi Filati is that they don't put too much effort and energies into their labeling and I mean um, the hangs I bought didn't have any label. Uh, the, the silk, this cone has only their um, you know, brand um, logo and they wrote Seta, which is silk um, inside. So they don't put too much effort into the marketing. And I've worked in marketing before 
uh, <laughs> I know how much that can cost like to invest in you know good design and a lot of branding it can take a huge chunk of the price of anything um, up but that's something to take in consideration if you really like you know really beautiful labels and aesthetically pleasing skeins that's not what you will get i guess with this yarn so that i think also the re that that's the reason probably why um it's cheaper than the other the other yarns okay so let's go to the second yarn company that I've bought cruelty free yarn from and this is a company that probably many of you know is the knitting for olive and the yarn is called pure silk so this is the same type of silk boret silk as the campolmi filati so both of them are basically the same um, I've noticed that some not all some of the colorways of knitting for olive pure silk are a bit they have more shine than the campolmi filati boret silk I bought two colors I bought this um, pink <laughs> raspberry pink and this copper and this copper is more matte compared to the pink um, but overall they're very similar so the darker one is the campolmi filati of course and the copper lighter one is the knitting for olive so they're very very similar so they're very very similar um, I mean it's the same type of silk but this costs double <laughs> And um, so while you pay the Campolmi Filati Borat Silk about eight um, bucks per 100 grams, here you pay nine, 10 bucks per 50 grams. So it costs basically double. And, um, but you get a lot more colors. There are 25, 24 colors of this pure silk by Knitting for Olive. So that's something that, you know, to take in consideration. And there are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. The Knitting for Olive Pure Silk is very similar in the knitting experience and uh, in the texture. It feels, a, it, it is tiny bit more shiny, but I think it can also depend on the dyeing process and the different dyeing products that they use to color their silk red silk um, but yeah there are maybe many many different um, variables that make this yarn a bit more shiny I wanted to complete to finish the this project I've knitted with this pure silk before recording this episode <laughs> but I couldn't finish it because I decided to transform it into a dress. So it's gonna be a lot of knitting. So I decided to knit a dress uh, to transform this uh, camisole. This is a, bit, a modified camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear. And I'm turning it into a dress. So I really uh, love this how this looks and i've been knitting quite a lot i'm using needle size 3.25 i think so it takes a long time to knit all of this fabric and i've knitted other things as well so probably i would have finished it a lot sooner i've decided to do some increases on the back to kind of uh, fit my hips and bum and um, I really like how this is turning out but it's yeah it's taking a while and I purchased a third skein of this knitting for olive pure silk in the color copper I decided to get one more skein to have it longer 
and uh, it's not gonna be like a super long dress it's gonna be above the knees um, but I think it's gonna stretch also the knitting experience is pretty nice and flowy as I said it, because it's a bit irregularly spun it has a very good grip I'm holding it single uh, so um, I can't completely compare it with the other Bowred Silk I showed you before, the Campolmi Filati one, um, but I think this experience could be very similar. This, however, feels a little bit, just maybe it's just a placebo effect, I, I don't know, but it feels a little bit stronger than the Campolmi Filati, just a tiny bit. Um, I really love this yarn, but yeah, the price compared to the one I showed you before is double, so it feels a little, I don't know, I think it's something to, to take in consideration. But if you're not like on a budget or something, this can be a very amazing yarn and so many people have knitted with this yarn, there are so many Ravelry projects. Um, that recommend this yarn as their the first choice so you have like a, an array of patterns to choose from um, but I believe that you can use the yarn I showed you before uh, for those patterns as well because it's basically the same yarn so yeah I really really like this I will rate it an 8 maybe 8.5 0.5 out of 10 like the previous yarn I showed you I'm saying an 8 instead of a 9 or 8.5 I guess we're basically there or it's very similar to the other one just for the price I mean I guess you pay really you pay the company as well but this is very high quality yarn as well he has a um, it's 100% Bored silk is that this it has this um Oeco text standard 100 which um basically like says that it's kind of fairly produced organic and all of that so it's I think you pay also that um I mean it's still a fairly I think overall a fairly priced yarn because it's silk you know and uh, all of the color choices that you have but yeah it's something to take in consideration it's knitted in a two by two broken rib um, stitch which means that you see there are some mistakes but uh, broken rib means that you um, knit to purl to one round and then the next round you do stock in it and you repeat these two rounds and so it kind of breaks the ribbing that's why it's called broken rib um, but it's I think I really love broken rib the look and the knitting experience and um, I've decided with the other um, color to I just cast it on the other day maybe few days ago I decided to cast on another camisole this is kind of self-drafted it's very similar in the construction as the previous one so you start knitting these um, kind of triangles and then you join them together and um, cast on new stitches for the back I'm just knitting as I go but I, I suppose this is very similar to the camisole number two by my favorite things knitwear because this is just a two by two ribbing ribbed pattern and this time I'm using needle size three millimeters so this is gonna take a long while but I have all the summer all the time um, I, I don't have any rush to finish this as soon as possible let's say so overall yeah I really like this yarn I really like the knitting experience I like the color choices and um, I recommend it um, just because of the price I would choose the Campolmi Filati um, instead of this one but I mean maybe 
this is more accessible in the sense that you can find it in many different stores than eating for olive and they have also their store that sells worldwide whereas the Campolme Filati I think they sell um, internationally as well but it might be a bit price I've, I've no idea I never bought um, the their yarns from abroad so I don't know and now we go to the third company which is BC Garn and the yarn is I think it's a fairly new yarn called Jaipur Peace Silk so they have another Jaipur Silk Fino I think they so they have two silk yarns I, I think um, but the one I tested is the Jaipur Peace Silk so the Jaipur Peace Silk um, comes in 50 grams hanks. I caked them up. I've used this one to knit a bandana that I'm going to show you soon. Head scarf, I call it bandana. Um, it's a head scarf. And um, this one uh, hank, 50 grams, cost about 20, 25 bucks. So it's very expensive compared to the other two um, cruelty-free silk yarns I showed you. And this is a different type of cruelty-free silk. It's called Eri silk. So it's a bit different than the Boret silk. It's a lot, it has a lot more shine, a lot more shine than the other two yarns I showed you. Here you can see it's more shiny, it's more silky, it's more soft, it has more yeah, it's more regularly spun, so it doesn't have such a good grip as the, I don't know, pure silk by Knitting for Olive or Campol Mifilati Borat silk. Um, I decided to create an accessory, a head scarf, and I knitted it with the 2.25 millimeters needles, so tight gauge. This took me so long. <laughs> I'm glad I kind of created a tiny accessory rather than a massive you know garment or shawl but I really love how this feels on my head and also on my neck so I've been wearing it as a um, neck scarf but mostly as a head scarf so I am happy I've tried to knit in a tighter gauge uh, so I could really feel the fabric. To be honest, this feels amazing on my head. I've been going on hikes and wearing this on my long walks when it's very warm. It hasn't been super warm, but some days um, there was a lot of sun. I really liked the effect. It feels so soft, very breathable. I think it's worth the money. I'm not sure I'm gonna buy more, not in the situation I'm at, I'm at economically, but if you don't mind spending a little bit more or a lot more <laughs> for a yarn and you really want to invest in really interesting, cruelty-free silk fibers, try this because it's really an experience and I think it would be better to hold it double just so the knitting goes a bit faster but I suppose you can also you know go up on a on needle size and create a more breezy fabric. I've combined these two yarns to knit the this kind of eye cord strap strap can you call it like that so i held these two together this is a, a little bit is a leftover from a laceway hand dyed yarn by townhouse yarns it's a blend of merino and silk and i've held it together just just because i wanted a little bit of you know fun and see how um, it will look and I created this kind of double knitted or eye cord edge and yeah I like this yarn so if you're not on a budget I would I would suggest you to try it 
because it's very very luxurious this feels the closest cruelty free silk yarn to a silk yarn a non cruelty free silk um because it's so shiny it's so drapey it's yeah it creates a fabric that is a bit more stretchy more drapey than the fabric that um, bow red silk might create so i really like it however the price for me is um, a bit too much i think i could knit like a bra something like this one that i showed you before um i could knit something like this with this yarn hold it together with maybe another silk yarn so overall i would rate the knitting experience and the overall texture and fabric a eight out of ten um just because um it's yeah the yarn is light fingering and i've knitted it at a very you know tight gauge so it was a little bit I struggled a little bit, especially because this doesn't have such a good grip as the other cruelty-free silk yarns I showed you. Um, but I love the fabric. Um, this is amazing. I am surprised. I've been using it more than I expected. When I finished this, I was like, am I going to use it? This is not even like a color that is really, that really matches my warm skin tone um, but I love it I mean I really like it and uh, this is gonna last for a while I think long time because silk is also very um, sturdy even though it doesn't feel like because it's very also drapey I'm overall very happy on how this turned out but yeah I'm not gonna need another headscarf or project with 2.25 millimeters needles only socks probably but we'll see maybe i will who knows um i want to show you don't look at the condition of this um poor cone but i wanted to show you also this yarn i want to give you an alternative to this yarn so this is not f silk this is a bamboo yarn but it's very similar in the feel. The knitting experience is very similar to this one. So if you want a very, you know, silky and nice um, yarn, but you don't want to invest into, you know, such a tiny, <sighs> such a tiny and expensive yarn, you could try the, um, cone by silk city fibers this is the bamboo color toffee 734 i've knitted with this and i've um received this amazing yarn by my friend she gifted it to me ali she also has a podcast the ali in sweatpants podcast go and check her out yeah but i mean to knit this tiny bandana it's not so tiny it's actually covering my entire head um, I used half of a skein, so like 25 grams, which I think is good. I suppose that uh, if you hold it double with one skein, you could create like a scarf or a little bandana or head scarf. Overall, I'm very happy. All of the projects I've been knitting on are very enjoyable. I've been very enjoyable. These yarns are all beautiful in different ways, but I really want to support the local Campolmi Filati, the Italian company, uh, more. I'm gonna show, for sure buy more of uh, their Borat silk. And as I mentioned, I want to dye it, um, maybe buy like the white one and dye it with, I don't know, tree barks and leaves and some natural botanical ingredients and see how the fiber will react to the coloring process. So that's my future plan with cruelty-free silk. 
and um, I'm uh, really excited to finish this. I hope this video was useful or <laughs> I'm sure I forgot to mention a lot of things and uh, that's okay. It's, we're not perfect here. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked it and I hope it gave you some insights. I don't know. I, I just scratched the surface of you know, learning about cruelty-free silk yarns. Some of you know a lot more and I always enjoy uh, reading your comments. So if you have more information, please let us know, like, so everyone can learn more about this really amazing fiber. And uh, yes, I leave all the information and the, the spreadsheet that I mentioned in the description box. Feel free to comment, like, and consider subscribing to join us in, in this journey. And uh, I'll uh, see you very soon.